Hello together, my friends. This is another episode of Unicast. And today we are going to have a look at the new Zima board, which is being advertised as being a hackable SBC. It, arri it actually arrived today and I am very eager to have a look at it. So let's go ahead. All right, this is the board. It's heavier as I thought it would be. And it's uh, all, I think it's, yeah, maybe aluminum, aluminum. So what we have here, it's a PCI Express uh, times four slot. So you can expand the IO, you can plug in a graphics card, you can plug in some NVMe adapter, or as I would like to do, is plug in a 10G Ethernet interface. Sadly, you cannot plug it in without removing the slot racket, which I will do. But let's first have a look at what was included in the package. Here is a SATA Y cable, so you can connect up to two SATA drives because on the back there are two SATA ports. So you only got one power connector and you can either use the interface cable that comes along with it, which is, maybe you can see it better like that, uh, which is able to connect one drive, but there is also this this Y cable, so you can connect up to two drives at the same time. See over here, only one power connector, but two times SATA. All right, that's the adapters. No, not quite. This is another adapter which comes along. It's a mini display port to HDMI adapter because on the front you have a mini display port on the side so you can hook up a monitor. There is also two USB 3 ports and two gigabit ethernet which uh, happen to be Realtek ports. And uh, where is the power supply? Then there is this power supply included. It delivers up to three amps and it has a pluggable module depending on what you need. This is European. And of course you can just put it in here to give it power. But we would like to have a look. I mean, I would like to have a look inside and this is what I'm going to do. I will remove the screws on top which holds the back plate. This is just some some cover for protecting the inside here on the back. This is from plastic. And below here you can see the board with a battery and you need to remove two more screws to get a better look on the inside. This is holding the heat sink together with the PCB. And then you have to slide it out. Now you can see here is the Intel processor. This seems to be memory. Yeah, it's a version with four gigabytes of memory. The version with eight gigabytes of memory will also have chips over here on the side. Yeah, well, it's as easy as that. It's a single board computer and it has thermal conductor so the heat is being transferred over to the heat pipe to the to the heat sink okay i will reassemble it and then we will have a look how it works i am going to install opn sense onto it see you later here we see the booted device casa os is being installed by default but i would like to install opn sense right now which is why i'm going to reboot the device and i need the keyboard show keyboard and, and then, then press, press f11 so now i can select my uefi usb flash drive where opn sense is uh, ready to be installed 
I will fast forward here a little bit. While the flash drive boots, we will have a look at what different kinds of Zima boards there are. So you can uh, choose between three different versions, starting starting from 119, which is an incredible price. You can even get ten dollars off. Can you believe that? <laughs> so this one is a dual core CPU with two gigabytes of RAM. You can choose to have uh, even more. 4 gigabytes and a 4 core CPU or 8 gigabytes and still a 4 core CPU. So the price differs of course a little bit. I am currently running the 432 right now. So let's get back. We will try to install OPN Sense. I will use a German keyboard for my convenience. And then I will say install on ZFS, which is the superior file system in comparison to UFS. And we will say stripe. And what I have done is I have attached an external SATA SSD. It's not the fastest, of course, but we don't need fast when it comes to I.O. for a firewall. All right, this is the right drive. I won't use those th below here. This is the integrated 32 gigabyte uh, flash drive. I do not want to touch the Casa OS right now. Okay, I will overwrite. And this will again take some time. I will fast forward till the installation process is complete. All right, here we are. I've set a root password and this will be rebooting right now. As I did not change the boot sequence, I still have to choose what the device should boot by pressing F11. But this is the Samsung SATA drive, the external one. Okay, so here we are and the WAN interface is not being connected. I will rec reconnect it once again. Yes, that's better. And here we can see that the RE1 is now up and running. And I will try first just deactivate the packet filter and then let's see. Yeah, I can connect to it. Okay, well, that's it for the first impression. So we can see that it runs x86. It is able to run software like OPN Sense, like PFSense, like BIOS, and like OpenWRT. So it's predestined for running uh, this device as a firewall. I will, I will test it to the bones and getting back at you with some nice results. Out. Welcome back. It took me a couple of days to finish my benchmarking and I would like to show you the results. I did some network benchmarks, which I created with the help of the T-Rex software, which I regularly use for that stuff. We have the device under test, which is the Zima board, and I have my C-Rex, uh, my PC with T-Rex on it. This is the PC running T-Rex. It is quite a capable one. And over here we have the device under test, the Zima board, and we will penetrate it with packets. And for that, I established three different kind of tests. One is running HTTP simple in contrast to the iMix, which is several different kinds of connections like email and also web and stuff. The third test runs DNS only. In order to do those benchmarks, I did not only run those benchmarks on one specific routing platform. I tested OpenWRT, ViOS and OPN Sense. 
all running the same tests. And here are the results. Here you can see the results of the packets per second benchmark. Uh, I mean, it's not a dedicated benchmark, but I measured how many packets went through the interfaces and I also measured how many bytes went through them. And here we can see the results of um, my, my recordings of how many packets per second the different firewall um, solutions were able to achieve. And you can see that um, the OPN sense DNS bars are quite low. This seems to me a kind of flaw. I suggest you ignore these errors, especially when you look at the same DNS benchmarks in comparison between the three different firewalling applications. You can see that the OpenDNS uh, put through the most DNS traffic, which does not conclude to what we can see here though. So I suggest we need to ignore these results over here. They are inconclusive. What I was able to reproduce is that both interfaces were utilized the same amount only on OPN Sense. You can see this in the HTTP traffic, you can see that in the IMAX, uh, you can see it over here, but even below here you can see that only OPN Sense was able to fully utilize the two gigabit in the Ethernet interfaces at the same time with coming close to one gigabits per second. All the other, like VIOS and OpenWRT firewall solutions, did not achieve that by far, which is a little bit odd because only on one interface uh, close to one gigabit was achieved on the other side only about 100 megabits per second, so one-tenth of a gigabit went through the, the wire. So uh, one of the conclusions for me is that OPN Sense seems to be the best solution, at least on this very device, when it comes to networking performance. The rates w going through the wire when it comes to DNS traffic is way below what is being achieved, for example, with HTTP. But uh, even in that field, OPN Sense outperformed the other two competitors. You can, you can also see that OpenWRT and VIOS both performed quite similarly with close to identical numbers, both running Linux, of course. If you plan to use this as a firewall and if you plan to uh, run a gigabit internet uplink on it, I suggest you use OPN Sense. Next to the networking benchmarks, I also wanted to see how the device compares to devices I recently reviewed. Uh, when it comes to CPU power. What I did is uh, I used the OpenSSL benchmark, which is a standard for OpenWRT, and it calculates some, some ciphers and some hashes and some stuff. And here you can get a rough idea about how powerful the CPU is. I did some benchmarks running single-threaded, so you get a feeling of how how powerful the CPU in one core is. Today there are still a lot of applications who run just single threaded and it doesn't matter if you have a 32 core CPU when the single threaded performance sucks, your, your performance using this application will also be bad. More modern applications run their tasks in parallel, running on multiple cores like modern CPUs do have multiple cores today and the, the number of cores CPUs are getting are rising. And here on the on the lower chart you can see the multi-threaded uh, it's this one the multi-threaded performance uh, results. So we can see that the Deciso DEC 740 which of course has the most powerful CPU which I expected beforehand outperformed the other competitors well quite clearly I would say. Only in in the SHA-1 the Zima board actually achieved more bytes than the DEC did. I don't know why that is but as you can see the Zima board clearly comes in second most of the times. Here is another um, event where the Banana Pi R3 outperformed the Zima board but in a general sense you could say the Zima board comes in second 
in the single-threaded benchmarks. Let's head over to the multi-threaded benchmarks. I will move myself over here. <laughs> Sadly, I did not collect back in the days multi-threaded benchmarks with the DEC 740. I need to redo that. But for now, we still can get a rough idea about the powerfulness of the device. You can see that the Zima board almost always won the throne. <laughs> like over here, the Banana Pi once again outperformed the Zima board, but the green bar of the Zima board is most of the times on top. Apart from the networking performance, you really get some decent CPU performance and together with the performance comes the power consumption, which is also a, a good value, I would say. It's running between 8 and like 13 watts. When I ran some benchmarks, it went up to like, yeah, well, 13 watts, but uh, I also connected uh, an external PCI Express gigabit Ethernet card while I ran the benchmark so it might consume a little bit lower in your environment. Depends on what you're doing. When you run an even more power hungry card it will consume more power of course and um, what I also connected was a SATA drive. So it depends on what you connect and how many devices you connect. You can connect up to two SATA drives you could connect a PCI Express card and USB devices, so it might be different, but you get a rough idea. And, well, I would have to say, I have been looking what devices there are on the market when it comes, especially when it comes to, to having a device for networking equipment, like running it, running it as a firewall or at a or as an access point, or both at the same time maybe. The Zima board actually is a really good option because it is very versatile. It has a lot of different options, what kind of I.O. or storage you would like to connect. You have a really good performing CPU and all that at the same time, giving at a very low price point, starting at 119, going up to close to 200 euros for the biggest device with 8 gigabytes of RAM, which I would suggest if you like to run this device as a NAS with ZFS, you would need more memory. But we are concentrating on, on networking, so I suggest if you would like to run this as a firewall and you need a really good performance, run it together with OPN Sense. And if you would like to do some additional stuff on it, like intrusion detection or stuff like that, get the bigger device like the APU 432 or the 832 depending on how much memory you would use. All right. I hope you liked my review. Give me a thumbs up. Come back and also have a look into my written review, which I will link below. Bye bye.